Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Monday, the 15th of June. It's outstanding to be with you again this morning. We're just hanging out for a couple of minutes. We're on Facebook Live. If you're listening to this later on in the day, the reason why we may be giving a shout out to a few people is because uh, Gary Barnier has just joined us online. It's wonderful to be with you guys. Uh, so guys, if you're listening to this later on in the day, it's outstanding. We really want to continue to encourage you. Keep putting the comments up. Keep typing in some of the things we're asking you to type in. Regardless of you picking this up this morning, later on, you can find us on YouTube later on in the day and on Spotify at Abundant Life Church Tasmania. It's important you put the Tasmania in there, otherwise you'll be watching uh, or looking through for a while. But it's great to see friends Great to see uh, my beautiful bride online, Tim Smith. Fantastic to have you with us all the way from Smithton. Love you, man. And I thought I saw um, Emily Lambert there too. So great to have you with us too, Em. Morning, Gaz. Good morning, Liz. Uh, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. It's dark outside, but it's light in here. It's warm in here. Uh, I believe today is going to be an absolutely fantastic day. Who's with me? Who, who believes that today is going to be a day of promise? a day of provision, a, a real day of we get to explore some things differently, we get to think some things differently, thinking differently about ourselves, thinking differently about our God, thinking differently about each other. You know, that's kind of cool, right? So, hey, we're going we're gonna to dive straight in this morning. First of all, thank you uh, for taking the time to share these on, uh, whether it's on Facebook or you're sending a link to YouTube, Spotify. It means a lot to me personally. Uh, but it also means a lot to the people that you would really care enough about to say, hey, I, I heard this this morning, I heard this this week, wondered if there was something in that for you, let's have a chat. Uh, so uh, thank you for sharing those out. We really just can't ever uh, underestimate enough what um, sending something this like this out to a friend, to a family member, to a workmate may actually mean. It doesn't mean that we're judging, it doesn't mean that we're sort of saying, sharpen up it means that i'm learning some things hey why don't you uh join with me uh, I'm, I'm changing some language i'm i'm thinking differently uh this has helped me maybe it'll help you so thank you so much for doing that we love to take just a couple of minutes at the beginning of these sort of podcasts to say hey these are the things that uh we believe as a community of faith we we are so much more than just a, a religious organization in fact i think that most of us would sort of feel quite uneasy about talking about us being a religious organization religion for me being a series of rules that i follow in order to reach god whereas we want to do things both from relationship for relationship and uh, we love to be able to step into that place of, of intimacy with a creator God a, who calls us friend, who loves us exactly as we are, but refuses to let us stay there because of that great love. And so his grace and his truth, uh, his, his word, we call it the Bible, uh, his presence, we call it the Holy Spirit, is all about drawing up the treasure that he implanted into us at the very beginning of our lives. You know, we say this every week, you are made on purpose for purpose we love the fact that there are new people joining with us sort of every day and every week uh, on these online gatherings as we try and wrestle through how we come back into in-person gatherings but these points are so important because we get to continue to lean in and go i am made on purpose for a purpose and then i take the first steps and then the next step and then the next step of faith and in doing so, uh, our belief changes. We've so often sort of said that where our belief goes, our behavior follows. Where the mind goes, the person follows. And so today is really just about uh, continuing to challenge, refresh, and refine our faith so that we can actually be um, acting, walking, uh, moving, speaking, uh, engaging differently with a world that so desperately needs people of not just uh, good moral fiber and character but people of faith and people who carry favor and blessing people who speak things into being people who declare possibility people who bring joy and peace into gathering that wasn't there before they rocked up because we get to carry this person of jesus wherever we are so as a church we love to say that we are here to, to see connection happen with 
God the Father. So we love the fact that God connects with us. We connect back with God. We call that discipleship. We call that relationship. And then we get to do that with each other. We take that faith into our Mondays and our Tuesdays. And then we'll be able to connect with the, the entire world. So it's a, it's a great day. It's a fantastic mission that we've got. And we love to be able to base this on the values of people and communities, not judging, but certainly taking the truth and adjusting our, our mindsets, our behaviours, our attitudes, by being able to uh, say we honour and we celebrate all of the uh, the wonderful things that, that God has placed in you. Carol, it's so great to, to have you with us. Thank you so much. Because, you know, Carol, we, we say that God's fingerprints are all over you. We honour and we celebrate who you are, your stories your experiences and your gifts, celebrating the good things which happen to us and happen through us, but honoring the unique ways that we are handcrafted to carry goodness and life and light into the world. And then by placing Jesus at the very center of this, uh, we actually get a chance to be able to understand greater meaning. Uh, we be able to have a perspective on pain and disappointment, uh, on the dilemmas and the flames of the world, and we're in a, in a position to be able to go, you know, I actually have an anchor point and Jesus is that center point. So uh, love, love that today. I'd love if I could encourage you all. Just uh, thank you for so many joining us online at this early hour. But why don't you type in today, he is willing today. He is willing today. I'm gonna, I wanted to, uh, this week we're looking to really start a new series in our Sunday morning online gatherings on caring and connecting and engaging. We're going to take our time defining that and looking at how God connects with us and how we can connect back with him, how God cares for us and how we can care out from that position and how he's so engaged and, and willing in our lives and he wanting that response back from us, not demanding that response from us, but championing that response back from us. You know, like a, like a parent uh, with a toddler holding onto the edge of the coffee table going, come on, you can do this. He's championing us. He's calling us forward. Isn't that right, Scott? So why don't you type in today, he is willing today. And it's so important to write that today because it actually is a statement over these next 24 hours that it's not something that is deferred because hope deferred can make our heart grow sick. We understand faith is the, is the understanding that there are things unseen and things yet to be taken hold of. But as we step in faith, we believe that he is willing for us today. That's kind of cool. Uh, so thank you for, for writing that up. I, I'd like to, in terms of opening up this conversation today about he is willing, I wonder um, if we would, what would Jesus say to us if we were to meet him Face to face. Now, I'm not, I don't want to get too theological on all this concept, but what is it that we would want him to say? Would I, I would want him to say, "G'day, Matt. I've been waiting here for you. Hi, buddy. It's it's great to have you with me today." All those sorts of things. You know, what we don't want him to do is go, "Oh," or ask his advisors, who, who, "Who's this guy again?" You know, we, we want him to be able to acknowledge us by name. We want him to us to be able to approach us with a warmth, and we we understand that that is his heart towards us but what is it that we want God to move towards us with we want him to say I am willing to you we understand that in in Matthew 25 23 there is this sense of well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful in a few things I will put you in charge of many things come and share in your master's happiness now we often use this as a as a a, a, a word of of hope for our future, that when we step out of these earth suits and into our eternal bodies, that that will be how we're sort of welcomed at the proverbial pearly gates. But you know what? It, it's actually more than that. It's actually a statement of today that well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a few things. And I've got to tell you, beloved, some of those few things are not good and easy to carry things. They're not light. They are sometimes heavy with disappointment. Well done for walking through uh, that period of shame in your life. Well done for walking through that, that area of pain in your life. You stewarded those things. You carried those things. You are faithful in those things. I absolutely love that. And I'll put you cha in charge of many things. Sometimes this is what we do with the, with the little things. What, what do we want Jesus to, to sort of say to us when we come to him in person? What do we, what do we want Jesus to say to us when we come to him 
with a problem. You know, it's this sense of I am willing in Matthew 8 and Mark 1, right at the very beginning of Mark's gospel, but also in Luke 5, 13, Jesus and his disciples are approached by a leper, a man with a, a dreadful and highly contagious skin disease, the, the COVID-19 of, of two and a half thousand years ago. And he comes to Jesus and he says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. What do we want Jesus to say in that position? If you are willing, you can make me clean. Or maybe, or let's examine your past, or it's not really the right time right now. But Jesus says he reached out his hand and he touched the man. He didn't go, well, let's look at how you got here. Let's go back and examine, are you worthy of me. Let's go back and talk about whether or not you've done all the right things to move yourself into a position to accept my favor and my blessing. Now it says Jesus reached out his hand and he touched him. He didn't say, you know what, all your bad decisions have made you into this person that you see today. You were you hung out with the wrong crowd. That's why you caught leprosy. You 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 your be, your belief led you into behaviors which means that you are now broken and I'm sorry man, you're going to have to pay that fine. Yourself. No, he reached out. He broke every social norm. He went through every, broke every health protocol of the, of the ancient church. And he said, you know what? No, I am willing. Be clean. Now, please understand, I am not talking about uh, breaking down the Department of Health guidelines. I think that as, as, as a community, we have done so, so well and seen the stop of COVID-19. We're so excited to see what's going to come in the future uh, from our gatherings uh, you know, in the church and, and wider again, the joy of coming back into community. I'm not suggesting that, but I'm suggesting that there is nothing that stops Jesus saying to you today, I am willing. As we examine this question today, and if you haven't had a chance to, to write this up, and good morning, Jackie, and good morning, Laura, why don't you write in, I am willing and this is what God is saying to us today. This willing is to, it means that I have in mind, it is my intention, it is my purpose, it is my desire. I would love to do this thing for you. So Renee, when Jesus says to, the, to this leper, this outcast, this highly contagious and, and socially destructive individual that was, that was uh, reviled, that they would throw stones at him to drive him away, Jesus says, I take delight in setting you free. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? I have pleasure in this as another rendering of I am willing. It's not just, oh, I guess I have to. Jesus doesn't come to you with a, I guess I have to. He comes with a, I take pleasure in this. I delight in this. We're going to talk about how we can refer back to him in a minute. But isn't it wonderful that that Jesus who calls us friends in John 15, not no longer servants, no longer slaves, but I call you friends, says, I take delight in lifting your burdens. I take pleasure in whispering secrets to you. I, I am, it's my intention to see you clean and whole and vibrant and bearing fruit. It is going to take something very, very different. We're going to get to these points in a minute, and it is so important that as a as a community of faith, as a community at large, that we go, we have to do some things differently. We're going to need to be create, courageous, create courageous and creative. We're going to need to think out of the box. We're going to need to be so brave because Jesus has said, "I am willing to break the taboo over your life. I am willing to break." All the religious tradition which has held you down and says, you can't come in. You can't know me. You can't flow in me. I will break that. I am willing and I take delight in that. I tell you, if I come to Jesus with a problem, that's what I want to hear my Lord and Savior say, Father, I've got this need. Father, I'm broken. Father, I'm heavy burdened and weighed down. I, I need a hand. I, I, I long for your voice. I, I want your touch I'm so desperate to hear him say, I am willing. So why don't you type this in today? Thank you, and Thank you, Jackie, for typing in, I am willing. Why don't you type in, he delights to bless me today. He delights to bless me today. We have to understand, as we start talking about I am willing, I'm getting to the point where I want to talk to, 
to us as a, as a community of faith, as, a, as an army of goodness and, and uh, social justice, as people who carry truth and, and, and light a banner, bring, raise a lantern over our land, that we have to be willing. But uh, we have to start with the fact that Jesus did it first. He says, I am willing. So why don't you type in, he delights to bless me today. He delights to bless me today. What does Jesus want us to say when he comes? So we say, what does Jesus, what do we want to hear Jesus say? Well done, good and faithful servant. I am willing. G'day, Liz. Hi, Jackie. So great. I love you. I've been waiting for you. I've got some secrets to share with you. I've got some, some gifts to give you today. That's sort of what we want. But what does Jesus want as a response back from that? There's the beautiful parable in, in Matthew 21. It's the parable of the two sons. And I'll, I'll just read it. It says, what do you think? There is a man with two sons. It's a picture of, of very two different approaches because um, they are both his children. What do you think? There is a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. I will not, he answered. <laughs> That's been my experience. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Now, Jesus is talking to a whole bunch of uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, well-versed people of scripture, of religious tradition, of piety, and, and of, of uh, position and prominence in the church. He's speaking to them and, and he says, which of you these did what the father wanted? And they said the first. Yeah, it was the first. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. And then, then allowed the father's identity to permeate his heart, allowed the father's voice to speak to him and call forth that nobility and that obedience and that purpose in his life. He said, I won't. But then he allowed the, the, the uh, relationship to move him forward. The first they replied. And Jesus said, yep, you're absolutely right. Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. This is an absolute backhander to religious people and should be, beloved, and let me say this as beautifully as I can, this should be a, a backhander to the religious spirits in our own lives, in our own gatherings today. Because it's not a matter of saying I will and not doing it. It's a matter of actually moving in relationship and allowing that relationship to move us forward in obedience and fruitfulness and joy of connecting, of caring and engaging. He says, I'm, I'm telling you, these other guys, they're getting into heaven before you. He says, for John came to show you the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not believe repent and believe again we just come into this but what does jesus want from us he said i am willing he has said you know what you've carried pain you've carried disappointment you haven't stopped yep maybe you've had to have some time in a spiritual hospital maybe you've had to have some time you know in in a in a time of being ministered to in order for you to to resume a life of ministry or start your life of ministry but he says to you well done good and faithful servant these little things they are going to be magnified into great and glorious things because you did not stop. Even though I was a long time in coming, you, you were faithful and you persevered and I'm giving, I am proud of you. He says, but even for the religious guys, they said, no, no, I am not willing. I see what you're doing. I hear what you're saying. It lines up with scripture, but I am not willing. That's harsh. You know, I wonder if you would type this in for me today. You said, to make a difference, I have to make a decision. To make a difference, I have to make a decision. And thank you for the encouragements coming up. But why don't you type that in? To make a difference, I have to make a decision. I see my good friend Matty Carswell on there, Dan Upton, who is uh, just really championing the church in Port Sorrel, super proud of, of you and your family and love being part of the church that we're all part of, Dan. I see those two great friends of mine and men of God who have made a difference because they've made decisions. They have not given up. Yep, you know what? They've been punched fair in the ear hole more than once. 
their heads have rung and they've felt concussed. I'm not trying to, to, uh, to give too much away, boys, but we share very similar stories and yet we are still here together and that encourages me so much. But to make a difference, we have to make a decision. We make a decision with how we spend our time, what we do with our talents and what we do with our gifts, what we do with our money and how we actually say, you know what, everything I have has come from him and I am not going to be put into chains by what materialism or, or what my worth is, is weighed up with, with my bank balance or my paycheck. I'm releasing and I'm surrendering all of this to you. I make a decision as to what I do with my words. Or I, just, I make a decision on what I allow my, my thinking to rest upon. I allow a decision on how I'm going to step over the, the proverbial chicken line and still continue to encourage people, even though they've said, oh, stop encouraging me, and to continue to invite people, even though they've, they've, they've not even replied to your, your invitations. We keep on going. If we want to make a difference, we make a decision to keep on going. And I was thinking the other day that so many of the situations that we're in right now has purely been a failure or a reluctance to make a decision. So our current circumstances are based on failures or, or inabilities to make a decision yesterday. So here we are today. And some of these things are small things. You know, it's, it's not, I don't want meant to be sound too frivolous, but honestly, just yesterday I went through my iPad and my iPhone and culled off a series of, of stupid little games that I was wasting time with and wasting time on because they were getting in my way and I was spending more time on those than I was on, on things which are really important. I made a decision. I deleted some phone apps. Big deal? Maybe. But it allows more space it allows a, a, a different mindset and a presence. And if nothing else, it says, I am determined to make a difference so I will do some of the small things which are there. Jesus came and turned everything upside down. He said, I am willing. Are you willing? I am willing to reach out and touch a leper. Are you willing? And he did it throughout his ministry and he wants to do it Today, as we are working at how we re enter church life, as we are working out how we do relationships in homes, in workplaces, online, and in person, we are working this out. Are we willing to do something different? Are we willing to make some big decisions? We're not making them alone, we're not doing them randomly, we're not doing them spasmodically, we're not doing them schizophrenically. We are doing them based on the word of God, the presence of God and the and collective conversation and wisdom. But are we willing? Jesus turned the whole world upside down. He, he, he came and changed everything. Look at his traveling companions. He chose two brothers, hotheads, who were going to call down fire on people who were rejecting the message of Jesus and, 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 and um, rebuking him and ridiculing him. I will call down fire. He, he chose Peter, this unschooled fisherman, who even after three years cut a dude's ear off and Jesus had to go and restore this guy's ear. We talk about the people here. We traveled with Matthew. If, if you haven't actually had a chance to, to watch the, the new Bible series called The Chosen, The Chosen, you can find it as, a, as a, uh, an app for your phone. You can find it on the web platform, The Chosen. It's about eight um, just Bible videos, Bible stories, beautifully produced, just amazing the way that that renders the person of Matthew, the tax collector, that, that he, was, he was such a, a, not just a scoundrel, but so despised because of the taxes that he emplaced as part of being a, a Roman um, stodgy, I guess. I don't even know if that's a word, but you know what? That they were so reviled him and Jesus welcomed him along with the fishermen, along with hot-headed um, brothers, along with a teenager in John, he is turning the world upside down. No longer do you need to be a Pharisee of Pharisees to travel with Jesus. You just need to be willing when he said, follow me. How is Jesus breaking the chains then? And how is he breaking the chains now? He, he uh, actually said, you know, Peter, throw your net out the other side. Jesus, Peter's gone, I've been doing this all night. But yet he was willing and the catch of fish was miraculous. Again, Peter's going, we don't know how we're going to pay our taxes. And Jesus says, go fishing. 
Peter goes, go fishing. How am I supposed to catch enough fish to pay the taxes for us all? The first fish that he pulls in has got a coin in its mouth that pays their taxes. We just have to be willing sometimes to get a line wet. We just have to be willing sometimes to throw the net over the other side. Peter, get out of the boat. If it's you, Lord, say come. And Jesus says, come. And Peter says, if you're willing to say come, I'm willing to go. And this concept of what do we want God to say to us? What is he looking back from us? Willingness. It takes bravery. It takes courage. Sometimes it takes stepping out of our traditional understandings of how faith is going to be moved forward for our future. That some of the things that we've been doing have been great, have been beautiful, but some of the things haven't been bearing the fruit that we wanted to. Some of our approaches to problem, some of our approaches to how we share our faith, some of the, some of the solutions that we had thought had been working, we've got a time to stop. We've got a time to revisit. We've got a time to say, Lord, what is it that you would have us do in this day of, of 15th of June 2020, in this period of not quite post-COVID, but how do you want us to resume? I don't want to go back to normal. I don't want to go back to the old things. I want to say, I am willing to be brave, to be courageous, to think outside of the box, to get out of the boat, to throw the net out the other side of the boat. To be able to do the things which are required, to bring in the people that, that need bringing in, that we would think we would move and we would speak so differently. As the next season of believers, I'm here to tell you, we are going to have to make some different decisions in order to see some different outcomes. I don't want what I had yesterday. I don't want what I had last year. When Israel is walking through the through the desert for 40 years, God provided them fresh manna every single day and they weren't able to store it up. He said, I want to provide for you something different every day. You have to decide to get out of your tent and go and gather up this fresh manna and this quail which I'm providing for you every day. Every day there are new mercies. Every day there are new beginnings and we stand in the new day of a church because the world, we understand this, beloved, has changed. COVID-19 has changed. And what we see blowing up in Black Lives Matter and I Can't Breathe has changed. The way we understand the way that, that we do community and we communicate and so many new opportunities online as we are today. And then to be able to express creatively acts of love and service and kindness as we have. It's going to take a, some decisions to do something different. I've got a couple of minutes left, but I want to be able to show you and highlight to you the difference that Jesus made with the woman at the well. With Karen, uh, Pastor Karen spoke so beautifully about this just a couple of weeks ago. John 4, again, you'll find this story rendered like you've never seen it before in, in um, the chosen Bible stories. Jesus meeting the woman, the Samaritan woman, just outside the township of Sychar, in the middle of the day, he goes, he, he, normally uh, the Jews would have gone the long way around, a six-day journey, which what could have been a three-day journey, doubling the duration of the journey. But Jesus drives right to the heart, in the heart of the day, to meet a woman who has lived a life that which has seen her outcast, not just from uh, her own community, which the Jews revile, but even uh, in a wider um, collective sense, we would understand that her life had not been a life of, of wisdom and wise choices. She'd married five times, that her life had seen her ostracized and ridiculed and rejected. And Jesus comes to her and says, I am willing to make a statement about who I am. The first person that he revealed himself to as the Messiah was an outcast. The first person that he promised a well of living water, the Holy Spirit to, was a, a woman socially, uh, by gender, by class, and by religion, was absolutely not to be valued. And he said, I value you enough. I am willing to break the chains of how everything had been done. And I'm promising you that you will no longer worship in the old ways that you used to worship, but you will worship me 
the I am, the Messiah in spirit and in truth. What a revelation, what a statement that he is willing to do things differently. He is willing to do things differently. Are we willing to do things differently? And we started this morning by saying, what are the words we want Jesus to say? He, we want him to reveal himself to us. We want him to, to speak to us and to encourage us and to, and to bring us the warmth of his acceptance and his value and his belonging that he brought to the woman of the well. But listen to how this story plays out because he is willing, are we? This woman at the well actually has a name and her name is Fertini. And, and while she, her, the rest of her story is not recorded in the Gospels, it is throughout the rest of history. The Fotini went back into her village and she saw her sons and her daughters saved. And in fact, Jesus spent the whole time in that town and they said, we have seen and we have heard. And we have heard his willingness to reach out to us and we have been willing to receive. But Fotini wasn't just willing to receive, she was willing to connect with him to care enough to go. And so when she had heard that both Peter and Paul had been martyred, Rome at that time, the Emperor Nero was killing Christians by the hundreds, if not thousands. It's where the Colosseum and the Christians being thrown to the lions came to. He was, he was uh, incredibly uh, demonic in his abuse of Christians. Uh, you know, a, a complete um, despotic ruler. And Fatini goes to Rome in order to minister to the Emperor Nero. She goes there and she approaches him and she attempts to witness. And he actually, his response is to take her, her sons and her children, get this, and to beat their hands with iron rods for three hours in attempt to turn her away. They beat her hands and her children's hands for three hours with iron rods. They said the whole time they glorified God, they felt no pain and their hands were not destroyed. And you can go, that's just a fairy tale. But it would be, but Nero had to keep pushing on with her, his persecution of Fotini. It says that he set up six golden thrones for her and her children to sit on and lavish these tables with, with uh, fine jewellery and gold and fine food, hoping to tempt her with wealth and riches. And she wouldn't have any bar of it and continued to witness to the willingness of Jesus to save this horrible Christian killer. Incredible. He said, okay, that's not working. So he throws her and her children back into prison. He sends, Emperor Nero sends his daughter, Dominia, to go and to try and say, this is not going to go well. You're all going to die. Why don't you turn? You can, I can promise you homes and riches and, 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 and prosperity. And in the process, Fertini, she witnesses to Dominina and she gives her heart to the Lord, the emperor's daughter, and is baptized. Nero is so incensed that he puts them into a furnace for seven days. They open them up and they come out and they are unscathed. This is the willingness of God to witness through a woman who was an outcast, who said, I am willing to you. I, and then she said, I am willing for you to put myself into a position where, where it says, and, and, I can, and I can read it, that she was, he was put her through every form of torture, every form of known torture she was thrown back into a roman prison for three years and it said she turned the prison into a house of god what a level of willingness not well, her past was was one of of multiple marriages and complete outcast and here she is turning a roman prison in the midst of torture and suffering into the house of god nero ended up beheading all of the children and then the way that she died, she was thrown into a dry well. The, a well where she met Jesus. A well that said, I am giving you streams of living water flowing up from inside of you. She was thrown into a dry well. A well that she couldn't witness. A well that she couldn't see her. And the thing that they believe broke her heart was just a lack of relationship with other people. Because she was so willing to share her faith that the way she died was in a dry well bed. Friends, my time is done. I want to thank you so much for that time. I wonder if you haven't had a chance to write up today that we've been writing up things like, I am willing that he will bless me today. Or indeed, in order to make a difference, I have to make a decision. 
In order to make a difference, I have to make a decision. I have to say, I am willing. How do we do that practically? Well, first of all, we're going to pray in just a minute that says, Lord, I want to be willing. We ask the Lord to come and infuse us with his goodness, his power, that we might be more and more willing. We might have the courage and the bravery to step out of comfort zones and traditions and past expectations of either disappointment or limitation of any kind and say, I am willing. We pray, put yourself into a small group. We'd love to find ways of of having you come and connect. We can do in-person connection now, but we've also got a whole raft of of Zoom meetings where we can pray together. You can find us uh, both here on on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or send us an email at hello at abundant.org.au. But my question is, if Jesus comes to us today and asks us to do something different, to make a different decision, Are we willing to say, I am willing? And could our stories, hopefully without all the persecution and their hands being beaten, but could our stories echo like Fatini's, regardless of our past, our eyes fixed on our future because God is with us in the present. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you are so willing to approach us In the midst of pain, in the midst of disappointment, in the midst of broken pieces, you make something so beautiful, Jesus. It is your specialty to make beauty out of ashes, to make something beautiful out of broken pieces. And I thank you that you are not finished with us. I thank you that we haven't come this far just to come this far. But your plans and your purposes are here. We're made on purpose for a purpose. You said to us, I am willing, I'm willing to step through the mess of your past mistakes, your rebellion and your rejection of truth to get to where I am today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you don't treat me as my sins deserve. Thank you that you are always thinking better things of me than I can even think of myself. And we praise you, God, that you are willing and we can only in return say we are willing. Would you use us? Would you call us to be points of connection, points of care and points of engagement where we can love and we can uh, value and we can accept others for where they are and invite them onto the same journey that we are on. Being made and perfected in you, the good work that you began in us, you're going to bring to completion. And I just bless my brothers and sisters, those who have joined us live now, those who will watch it throughout the day. Father, we thank you. Lord, help us to be more and more willing. Empower us as you did with Fatini. Empower us today to be your messages, your messengers and your mouthpiece in word, in deed, and in whispered acts of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Uh, love to see you online tomorrow night. We've got Living what we learn, we've got Q&A Wednesday night, we've got communion on uh, Thursday night, always something going on here. Uh, contact us if you want any more help, you want any more connection or relationship, we'd love to do that. Hey, God bless you as you go and love someone. Have a great day.